welcome back to lesson number 12 so been uploading quite a few lessons recently and getting into intraday teaching and how to actually pick up trades right so the last few videos have been quite long i'm going to try and keep this one quite you know nice and short we're going to be discussing a concept and i've mentioned this concept to you guys before i haven't said what it's called but i've mentioned in the previous videos that there's a way to measure protraction you know where the high or the low of the day could be put in right the judas swing as we know during the london session typically puts in the high or the low of the day so the cbdr the central bank dealing range or some people call it central bank dealers range is a way to be able to measure this it's a measure of the protraction that occurs to form the high or the low of the day and the reason I've, you know, kind of left it until now to teach, I think it's, it's something that acts as an extra confluence. When I first learned this, I thought it's the kind of like, you know, it's just everything. It's just going to tell me where the high and low of each day is. If you know the high and low of each day, then you can just simply, you know, short from the top or buy from the bottom, right? But it's not that simple. I'll get into why. But in the right conditions, combined with the right things, it can help you form a very high probability thesis for where the high or the low of the day was made. And if you have that confirmation, you can trade as close as possible. For example, if we take this visual example, right? And I'll show you guys how to actually use the CBDR, but let's say this, the deviations of the CBDR, which I'll show you, line up with this low of the day. And we have a market structure shift with displacement here. And it's just happened during the London kill zone. Is it very probable that that's the law of the day? You, you know, we have to consider other things, your weekly bias, where you are in the week, blah, blah, blah. But let's just say, let's ignore all of that. Let's just think about the daily candle. I'd say it's fairly high probability. So what does that mean? If you know this is the law of the day, you can even go on your lower time frames, your three minute, your one minute, find a good entry, take this low, add your ADR, now you know where to take a profit. If you want to be safe, you can still catch a very nice trade from here to the top of the Asia range, right? In this specific example, that is. It just acts as an extra confluence, and you guys will see. So the CBDR is from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. New York time, right? That's very important. As you guys can see, this kind of like flow chart. We go from 8 p.m. to, of course, New York midnight. Makes sense. This range that forms, we want it to be 30 pips, ideally. That's a good number to have it. The example I'm about to show you guys is basically, you know, 30 pips perfectly, which is quite convenient. And the CVDR needs to be used for currency pairs only. You know, don't try apply it on your indexes, US 30, US 500, and all of that stuff. It's, it's not made for those, but the time aspect on this different. And central banks, you want to connect them to currencies, right? Let's jump on the charts. Okay, so this is Friday on EU. If I just turn my session indicator on, as you guys can see, this is what Friday done. Tokyo you know, kind of built a range. We did actually trend when you think about it, you know, all the way up. London still does offer a Judas because we formed the high of the day and then we have that that move downwards from New York. When right sorry um when we consider where the cvdr is it's in the previous day right so it's setting up for the high or the low of the next day now you guys see this blue box let's zoom into it a little this first candle is 2 p.m and this last candle here is 8 p.m so i can actually bring the box here right and now that i've zoomed in i can do it properly but what we want to do from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. is mark out the high and the low that happened during that time, right? Now we've marked the high or the low of the day. What we can do is use the deviations of this range. If you've done maths, you know what the deviations are. Oh, wrong tool. We want to project them. So first of all, actually, sorry, this range is almost 30 p 
pips perfectly you know which is very great because i don't think that happens very very often i wish it did It'd make life a lot easier but if we use right go from the bottom of this to the high sorry i'm gonna have to change my fib settings down the ote so if you get rid of you want to keep the point five point seven. To be fair, we don't even actually need the point. Yeah, so minus two. Minus three. Four. And we'll just add a minus five as well. Probably won't need it. Okay, cool. That's convenient. That's very convenient. Three. Right? Of course, it's not going to be exact. That's also one thing I want you guys to realize that this will not be exact. It might be like two pips below, two pips above, some something like that, but it will be relatively close. Now, right, if you go back down here, just move it to make it a little bit neater. So all we've done is project this range. This is one deviation of this range to, and of course, three and price lines up here, right? But we have to add logic. The CBDR doesn't just work by itself. Because if I just place this here, right, and you know tomorrow you expect the London, the Judas swing to be bullish, right? How are you going to know which number to use on CBDR? You don't just, you know, use the CBDR. You need to apply logic. So if we come out to our full hour, I had this marked for ages, right? We have this imbalance. And we know price is drawing to it, right? So it fits in with our narrative and we know it's very likely that we make the high over here the high of the day inside this and then we drop so what levels right once i've projected my cbdr what levels am i looking at i'm looking at my three and my four right possibly even considering my five but how do you know which ones are going to be relevant if we go back down to 15 minutes Remember that concept we use for, you know, almost every day. We use it for so many things now. The ADR. If this is 30 pips, right? You're not going to expect it to be all the way up here, right? That's 150 pips away. Is that realistic considering your ADR? No. But it's free realistic. Free is realistic. Four is even stretching it a little bit, you know, 120. So what happens? We come to free. It's 90 pips away. And... We formed the half today. Then we move lower. So how could you have used this? You come to the free during the London Judas swing. We then have a market structure shift with displacement. We can say here, right? Because we take out this low, and you can see it's just a straight down move at first. So if we project a fib, oh, I'm gonna have to change it back now. Let me just change this back. we project a fib and what do we get price offers you entry right get entry into the premium you could have entered off this fair value gap you know for example just to give you a visual example the fair value gap there at the start of the fair value gap since it's in the premium stop loss here as this is a probable high of the day and what can you do short for the remainder of the day now this is a friday so you know, taking the context, as I told you guys, we don't want to trade on the Friday. I wouldn't have wanted to trade on the Friday. But this whole, like, little run-up here was like a four-hour imbalance, I'm sure. So you could have targeted that. The most obvious target would have been this, like, small cluster of lows. You target that. You know, you get an easy 2%. Very quick move once you've been tapped in. Or of course, you can target lower. Target into this fair value gap or, you know, whatever. It's in hindsight now, so it doesn't really matter using this right now let's imagine this was a tuesday or wednesday whatever expansive day if you know that this is now the high of the day high probability and you've worked out your adr let's assume adr is like 100 pips from this high what you can do is minus 100 pips so that is 
so your 100 pips will be somewhere like here but and we have to give it that you know price might not reach that because clearly evidently price didn't reach 100 pips adr so what can we do we can look for a suitable take profit you know just before this or somewhere up here to be safe so again you know we could have targeted these two equal lows and expect them to get you know swept by price that would offer you almost three percent and of course if this was like the middle of the week and price give offered you that full you know expansion that large move of the day you could have targeted deep and caught a nicer trade but you know it's it's not about the rr it's about getting in line as early as possible from when the high or the low of the day is made but logically it just makes sense right if our daily range is going to be from this high to a low down here let's imagine and we want to short we want to be part of the expansion it makes most sense to get in as high as possible right because we can assume the same target and possibly catch several entries because this is a 15 minute even you know on the five minute you might be offered more entries over here this isn't great you weren't offered a lot of entries i'll be honest you know it's not very nice price action but on a typical day you might be and that's how we apply the cbdr it's not it's not some you know as i thought it was when i first learned it some very overpowered concept where you know you can like just instantly guess the how the law of each day no it's a concept that needs to be applied with logic right you have to combine the concepts this is why i'm teaching it towards the latter end of you know the intraday teachings and the lessons because i've taught you a few concepts now but you have to bring them together and you know how i tell you guys i start my days off with the adr with new york midnight price this is also something i use now what i need you to understand right the last thing i'll leave you with this cbdr is very ideal it's 30 pips it's perfect if this was something like 40 pips i probably won't consider it because 40 pips is very large right again reference to the adr it just wouldn't make sense sometimes i've seen the cbdr be like 45 pips you can't you can't really use that you know it's not it's not very practical some people differentiate and use the bodies of candles rather than the wicks right so here for example here it wouldn't make a massive difference but if i zoom in they would have projected it as something like that to the body of that candle very minute difference right doesn't really change much because you know price still is basically at the free it's just a couple pips above but the way we do it is we want to stick to whatever is close to 30 if the wicks are closer to 30 then we use the wicks if the body is closer to 30 then we use the body right another thing that i'll leave you guys with that we want to consider is the point fives so sometimes see price come to a 0.5 so between the three and the five and once again it won't always be exact but roughly there we want to consider this because you know i've explained this in like several previous videos where we consider the 0.5 of ranges of order blocks you know it makes a lot of sense and that's to that's to do with how the algorithm functions i think that's everything covered for the cbdr you know the video is quite brief but it's a concept you can go back test and you can see how well it's worked as i mentioned you know it doesn't work every day sometimes the range is too large and sometimes the range is even too small and sometimes it's not accurate you know it's just simply put like it will just be in a bit of a random space and that happens but when the pip oh sorry when the range is near 30 pips which is the ideal like let's say range size you can see how well it works out this was a very high probability high of the day here given the context we trade into a four hour imbalance we're in line with one of you know the cbdr deviations we then get a market structure shift with displacement we're traced into the premium so we get offered the opportunity to take this trade and then trade lower simple right so that's it from today's video if you guys have any questions you know 
I feel like this concept should be easy to incorporate if you're up to date with all the videos. But of course, any issues, anything, just hit me up as normal.